happy Sunday. I am back here for another live video. We are live right now on YouTube and also on Instagram. So if you're joining from either one, please give a hello, give, give a wave in the chat and let me know where you're joining from. As always, we're here every Sunday. So um, today I did not do nature news. It's on hiatus this week. Hi to you in the chat too. <laughs> and um, today I wanted to just talk to you guys about travel, about hiking and about actually stunts. So I know that a lot of you always ask me about stunts and would love to see more videos on my life as a stunt woman. Tuning in from AZ, hey, hey and AZ. And um, you know, so today I just wanted to answer some of your guys' questions that you might have about, you know, being a stunt woman, what's that all about and how that ties into travel and hiking. So thank you guys in the Instagram chat. Hi Mike, um, if you are joining in YouTube also, you know, let's get active in the chat. If you guys have questions about hiking or travel or stunts, let me know. I did already have some questions. I was going to go through um, here from questions you guys already asked. And I'll just start off with this one that I just got on Instagram chat. Hi from Germany. Hi to you too. Um, my most serious injury. So let's go back to 2013. This was one of my biggest movies that I ever worked on. Um, and I actually got two concussions on this movie. I split my head open, I got some staples in my head. Uh, so that was a, a rough movie for me. Um, I actually swung and fell off this um, sword of Optimus Prime actually. And hey guys in the chat, thanks for joining. And I actually fell about 15 feet to my head on the concrete, um, got knocked out, got some staples in my head. So that was kind of a bad day took me a while to recover from that. Um, and so that was my biggest injury <laughs> for stunts. And if you guys got more questions, hit me up in the chat uh, on Instagram as I can as we go through. But I did wanna just say before we get too far into answering questions, if you are not following on Instagram or YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. If you're on Instagram, head on over to YouTube, join us in the live chat there and hit subscribe. I am just shy of 7,000 subscribers on YouTube and I'd really like to get to that next milestone. So if you can come on over to YouTube at Alice Ford Adventures, hit that subscribe button, share my channel with a friend, you know, let's grow this community. I'd love to get more people on here to talk about stunts and travel and hiking. So the more, the better. Uh, Chris just asked in the Instagram chat um, how I got started. Well, that's a long story. <laughs> I actually got started in stunts uh, in around 2011. I actually did gymnastics my entire life, basically. And um, hi, thanks so much for joining if you're joining in the chat. Um, hi, Joe in the YouTube chat. And, you know, I, it's basically my life. I did gymnastics growing up, competed at a really high level, also in college, went on to do diving, pole vaulting, uh, track and field, and was a skier for a little bit too. Kind of did a little bit of everything. And post or a, um, What's been my most difficult? But yeah, so I just got started being an athlete. I ended up meeting a lot of people in uh, New Orleans and they were all in the film industry and I ended up being able to get into kind of the industry through working as a background extra and eventually got on the show Make It or Break It, which I don't know if any of you guys have watched or maybe you have like a younger sister or a kid that watched Make It or Break It, but I got to double one of the gymnasts on that and that was a while ago now, but a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows over the years, uh, everything from you know Transformers and Star Trek to right now I'm working on a pretty big movie I can't talk too much about, but um, just cut off Red Notice earlier in the year also with The Rock, so lots of fun projects that I've gotten to do over the years, and um, thanks for joining Incredible Africa, good to see you in the chat also, and thanks guys for you that are joining. Uh, what was the scariest stunt that I've ever done? It's a hard question. You know, a lot of people ask that about stunts and I think stunts in general, I think pretty much every big stunt you do, the first time is always scary. But once you've gotten kind of that first one out of the way, things are a little bit easier and a little less scary. So I think some of the scariest stunts are the ones where you have to fall really, really far. Um, jump off a building or go on something that's called a descender. Now a descender is basically like, think about jumping off a building, but you're actually on a line. So, you know, that line is supposed to catch you and kind of, <laughs> and then whoop, you get caught at the bottom. So it can be a bit scary that first time. Um, I've had to do a couple of those. Transformers actually just got off a job called Fall. 
couple months ago uh, where I got to do one of those too. And so those, those kind of stunts are always a little bit scary. And also like anything in a moving vehicle for me <laughs> is a little bit scary just because I have less control in a car than I do with my own body. So those ones are always a little bit scarier for me. Uh, question here on the Instagram. Do you happen to know if Tom Cruise actually does a lot of his own stunts? Yes, he actually does do a lot of his own stunts. And um, he, he does like, I would say his stunt double basically rehearses the stunts. They try it out with the team. They do like that, whatever it is, is super, super safe, safe for, stop, for Tom, excuse me. And, and then Tom actually does do the majority of the stunts himself. Now that's pretty rare. Not every actor does that, and I certainly don't want to have actors take away my job, so <laughs> I like it when the actors don't want to do their own stunts. But yeah, Tom is kind of an outlier. He, he really does really love to do his own stunts, and you know he trains really hard to be in good shape so that he can do that, but he does have a team of people, including like stunt riggers and coordinators and people that are there trying everything out, making sure that it's super safe for him so that when he does go to do it, um, he's in a, a safe place. Because we all know productions wouldn't want to uh, risk that if, if, they, if they didn't have to. So yeah, Tom Cruise does a lot of his own stunts. And as far as people that I've stunt doubled for, I have stunt doubled for not a lot of people you're gonna know the names of, honestly. Um, a lot of younger actresses obviously doubled Nicola Pelt on Transformers. Um, I'm trying to think of anyone's names. I mean, if you guys check out my IMDb, you can see all the people that I've ever stunt doubled. Um, but yeah, not anyone super, super famous. I mean, if you see <laughs> a woman that's, you know, my height and my size, it could be me. <laughs> and I've also played like zombies, um, ghosts, been in some horror movies, so lots of fun, different projects. Um, but yeah, you can go to IMDb and actually just type my name in and see all the different projects that I've worked on and some of the characters that I've been um, as well. So if you guys have other questions about stunts, you know, feel free to leave them in the chat. And I know I'm just going to pull up my list here because I did have a couple more. I know that Danielle Cuoca in the Instagram chat also asked about how I started in stunts and how I feel about battling feelings of inadequacy. inadequacy. <laughs> um, and am I a model? No, I used to be a model actually, so thank you for um, asking that in the chat. Um, so I guess going back to stunts, you know, I, I talked about already how I got into stunts. And it was kind of in a roundabout way. You know, I ended up just kind of meeting the right people at the right time. And Am I good enough to be in this job? Um, for me, I've trained my entire life as an athlete, so I didn't necessarily always have those, but yeah, when you step onto a film set and all of a sudden everyone is looking at you, it is hard sometimes to really have the confidence that you need to believe that you are there, you should be there, and that you're gonna perform well. But for me, I love to perform, and you know, being in the spotlight is something that I've done for a long time, so. I don't really have too many worries, I guess, as far as that kind of stuff goes, but thank you for that question because it's a really good question and I know that a lot of people out there definitely have struggled with that and I've struggled with it too with a lot of the stuff that I do here on YouTube and, you know, talking to you guys in all these videos. So, you know, we're not all super confident and it's good to work on that and you know, every video that I make, every movie set that I'm on, you get more confident with the experience that you gain. So, sorry guys, there's a, there's a fly in here. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> so, I'm just gonna see if you guys have any other questions in the chat here about stunts. Um, could you do a backflip for us? Well, not right now, guys, because I'm actually wearing Instagram later. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll uh, put one on my Instagram story tomorrow. But yes, I can still do a backflip. And uh, I still train in gymnastics and martial arts and all kinds of other different, um, you know, athletic dialects as well. So that's something that I definitely have to keep up with. Obviously, being a stunt woman is all about like your physicality and being able to move on the fly, pick up choreography. And so it's so important to stay in, in really good shape and be able to continue to perform the way that I 
have been able to since I was in my early 20s and I'm not <laughs> not in my early 20s anymore so um, yeah but I can still do a backflip I'd love to show you but uh, I can't do one just right this second um, if you guys want I can channel as well if you want to kind of like see me in action and see some of the flips and things that I can do it as well so if you have other questions about that kind of stuff you know as I said drop it in the chat feel free to Chime in here if you have questions. And if you're just joining, hit the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up if you're on YouTube, if you're on Instagram, give me a wave. I see some of you new guys in the chat here. Thanks for joining. Give you guys some waves here. And thank you guys so much for joining on the YouTube chat as well. Now I did wanna to talk to you guys a bit about travel too, unless you have other questions about stunts. And if you do have questions about stunts, you know, feel free to feel free to ask um, as well. Um, I know that I'm not traveling right now, as I, I know some of you guys might know that have been following me on Instagram and maybe on Twitter too. You probably know that I am in Atlanta, Georgia right now. I'm actually working on a movie here, and I'm going to be here for about the next. And we're not actually allowed to travel, so I'm going to be just sticking close to home here for a while. And I just did get a question here on Instagram, Tom, Tom, take two, um, saw my ski story, France to kick in the new year. Yeah, it was great. Um, am I a big skier? Yes, actually I am a big skier. So I actually grew up in New Hampshire. My dad was a ski patrolman at Aspen Mountain in Colorado. And so I grew up skiing from a very, very, very early age. I love to ski. And last year, or I should say, reading in, 2020, I was actually in Chamonix in France, which is in the Alps, and got to do several days of skiing there. It was absolutely amazing. It's a place I've wanted to ski. So that was just really special to me for that reason too. Uh, and I know one of the questions that you guys asked in Instagram chat was actually about some of my favorite ski destinations in the United States. So I'm actually planning another ski trip for, you know, later this year, hopefully, if I can uh, sneak away for a few days. And, um, but some of my favorite ski destinations just in general in the U.S. are Alta, which is in Utah. Uh, I spent a lot of time there growing up with my parents. Uh, there's some amazing skiing there. It's right outside Salt Lake City. There's also a couple other ski areas there, um, Snowbird and a couple other ones, but Alta was always my favorite. Just had like really long runs, more powder, less people um, than Park City also. So highly recommend Alta if you're looking for a great place to ski out in Utah. Also love Colorado. Breckenridge, uh, one of my favorites in Colorado. Also love Aspen Highlands. Um, my dad actually cut all the bowls of that mountain, so also a little bit of a sentimental value. Well, and then love the skiing in New Hampshire because that's where I grew up. Waterville Valley, Loon, Wildcat, um, such great ski areas up there and also Stowe in Vermont, I highly recommend as well uh, as another ski area. And got another question here about Kilimanjaro. Oh, <laughs> hi Kim. <laughs> yes, I am so glad, glad to see you in the chat. Um, guys, this is Kim joining from Africa. We actually started out our trek last, uh, two years ago in Kilimanjaro. So amazing to see you in the chat and uh, thanks for joining. Am I considering other treks, um, other routes uh, on Kilimanjaro? Yes, I do want to return to Kilimanjaro, and I'm not sure when that's going to happen. Obviously, as you guys know, travel is a little bit crazy right now, and, and so is, you know, international travel. So I'm not sure when I'm going to get back to Africa. It's definitely high on my travel priority list is getting back to Africa. So I, I would really love to do that. I'd love to hike another route up Kilimanjaro and potentially, like, sleep a couple of nights on the glacier. Um, if I was going to do that again, and I'd also love to go to Ethiopia and hike Mount Miru in um, Tanzania as well. So I hope to get back there and do that and uh, make a trip to Uganda and some other places as well while I'm at it. And so that's high on my list, and thanks so much for joining. It's good to see you again. Hi, Bob, <laughs> uh, in the chat. How are you? I'm good to see you. And you guys, if you don't know Bob's Adventure, 
Then uh, I actually went on a live chat with him on his channel on YouTube. You guys should check him out. He just joined us in the chat as well. Um, when is my next trip? Well, you guys, I don't know because as I said, I'm kind of stuck here in Atlanta for a while. So I'm gonna be doing just some weekend trips around here to the Smoky Mountains. You know, if I can get as far away as North Carolina, maybe for like a day trip or an overnight, I'm gonna do that. But it's gonna be a lot of like Appalachian videos from here on out um, for the next couple of months and hikes, you know, in Northern Georgia, um, Appalachian Trail maybe. I'm gonna try and do night one of the Appalachian Trail in just a couple of weekends and spend the night at uh, the, there's actually a, an inn you can hike to. So I'll be doing that hopefully and also doing a couple other places around these parts. And then, you know, next year I've got a big agenda of travel destinations that I'm really, really excited about. And I'll kind of share some of that short list with you guys because on that short list right now, it are <laughs> Colorado, obviously, Alaska, Patagonia, um, Africa, as I said. So, you know, what's gonna come next year when Hopefully things are a little bit back to normal and we can all, you know, go back to exploring the world. But right now I'm just exploring the state, <laughs> I guess you could say. And, um, <laughs> old man hanker, yes, Africa. I mean, yeah, for those of you that are on Instagram, as you said, as we know, I just talked about Kilimanjaro. Africa is amazing. If you've never been, I highly recommend you come to my YouTube channel. Check out if you haven't watched. I've got a couple videos on Serengeti National Park and a little teaser of like Serengeti and Kilimanjaro. It's one of my favorite videos. It has like this amazing music track and uh, I think it will really inspire you to go and take a safari. Um, seeing the amount of animals in Africa will blow your mind. The amount of wildebeest and zebra and all these other creatures that, I mean, you just, you don't see anywhere else on earth and you, you'll never see in the amount of numbers. You know, it is the world's largest animal migration in the world that they have through the Serengeti and through the Masamara in Kenya. And yeah, if, you, if you're gonna save up money for any trip, you know, anywhere, I highly recommend going to Africa and going on a safari because it's just, it's mind blowing. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And let's see what else you guys are asking here. Okay, well, I know one of the other questions that I had was my favorite winter destinations. I know that Arjun, I think in the Instagram chat had said he's planning a winter vacation. Wanted to know some some different recommendations that he had for winter destinations. So some of the places that I recommend, I mean, I guess it, it that's pretty broad, right? <laughs> winter destinations, uh, there's so many amazing places and it depends on where you are. I love like the Arctic, so highly recommend like Norway, Sweden, Finland, that whole Arctic area there. Um, and would, would definitely go to Alaska in the winter, even though that seems crazy probably to a lot of people. Um, Jackson Hole, Colorado I love. If you are on the other side of the world, you know, Thailand is great during Christmas, so is Cambodia. Um, and kind of that Southeastern Asia, it's a really nice time to go there. So definitely recommend those places as well. Um, and ever have I ever considered part of a longer backpacking trail, PCT, John Muir Trail, maybe a couple of weeks? Well. I don't know guys, I mean, I, I actually, you guys ask me this a lot and I'm not really sure. I would definitely do maybe like a week. I don't know if I would do a couple weeks. I think I would, that's a big commitment for me. And I think if I was gonna do that, I would want it to be like a group trip with, you know, some of you guys and, you know, a, a women's group or something like that where we all get to kind of do it together. Uh, cause I wouldn't want to be offline <laughs> and not getting to chat with you guys every week. So that would be a big commitment for me. But if I was going to do that and do one of these long trails, I would probably do one of the ones in Europe, to be honest. Um, you know, the UK has the coastal path, um, 
Liechtenstein just opened a cross country hiking trail as well. So did Italy. So I would probably do one of these multi day or multi week um, trekking routes, or maybe the um, Camino de Santo in Spain. So those would probably be higher up on my list than maybe the PCT or the Appalachian Trail, um, just because I think they're a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more exciting for me. So definitely not a no, but I'm not sure when I would do that. And hi Norman in the chat, nice to see you. Um, Mike Mana, thank you so much for visiting from Kenya here in the chat. And yes, I do wanna to come to Kenya. I was actually hoping to go to Kenya after my Tanzania trip two years ago. Didn't make it there, but it's on my list. When I'm back in Africa, I'm gonna do so many countries and I can't wait to share it all with you guys when I get to do that. Um, and that's great about the Lomosho route. Yeah, I wanna do that one too. Sorry guys, just chatting here about Kilimanjaro a little bit. So if you guys haven't hiked Kilimanjaro or looked up, looked up anything about it, you guys can check out, I actually have a video on hiking Kilimanjaro, which is up on YouTube as well. A uh, couple of uh, friends here from my climb back in 2018 that are in the chat on Instagram. So I would love to return to Kilimanjaro. And if I do, I'll definitely make it a group trip if there are people here that wanna go on and climb Kilimanjaro. It was such an amazing hike for me and the other women that joined that trip. Um, definitely a challenge and definitely something I'm so glad that I did and I can't wait to get that opportunity again if I, if I head back to Africa. Not sure what a balloon nut is, but I'm gonna pass on that <laughs> comment, guys. Um, can I please confirm that the earth is not flat? The earth is not flat, guys. <laughs> it is not flat. <laughs> it is round. Um, I, I've seen it on the television from space and I've traveled all around it and it's definitely not flat. So um, flat, er flat earthers, I, I'm just gonna say it right now, I think you're insane and uh, the earth is round. <laughs> have I been to Laos? No, I haven't. You know what, I'd love to go to Laos and Vietnam. I have only been to Cambodia. That's the only country in that area that I've been to. I absolutely fell in love with Cambodia and I've always wanted to return to that area and explore more of the neighboring countries. So Laos is definitely on my list of places that I would like to go. And uh, I really hope that, you know, next year and the year after I can really spend a lot of time, you know, traveling more, traveling to a lot more places and sharing a lot of those places with you guys. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, Old Man Hiker. He just said, I'm one of the hardest working people on social media and you guys should all subscribe. So yes, please subscribe. If you aren't following on, on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. I think I was three away from 6,800 this morning on YouTube. So we'd really appreciate any new subscribers over there. My goal this year is to get to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube and I would you know, I can really use your guys' help in doing that. So if you're on Instagram, head on over to YouTube come hit that subscribe button, join me over there. I post new videos every week and I, I love to chat with you guys on YouTube and have you guys join the community. So um, I really appreciate all of you guys that are joining here on Instagram as well and waving. Um, yeah, so if you have other questions about travel, you know, let's talk about them. I'm gonna go through, back to the questions here since you guys are a little bit quiet right now. Sorry, I'm just, oops. Ooh, there's all these new features in Instagram and it's very confusing <laughs> in the live videos. So I think I just put snowflakes on my face over there. Not really sure what's happening. Um, luckily I don't have those features on YouTube so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, and Dorian just agreed, the earth is round, guys. Um, <laughs> And thank you guys if you're joining right now. I am great. Um, if I ever plan a trip to India, I will certainly let you be my host. I, yeah, well, you just brought up a really good point because the Himalayas are a place that I absolutely wanna go. You know, 2019, I was actually supposed to go to Nepal 
and I am so bummed that I actually had to work and I wasn't able to go on that trip. So I have been kicking myself ever since because I really want to get to India and get to Nepal and hike the Himalayas. Um, for those of you that don't know, I am from New Hampshire, but I live in Los Angeles because somebody just asked that in the chat. And um, would I go to space if I could afford a ride? Ooh. I don't know, guys. Do you, how do you think I would look in an astronaut suit? <laughs> I'm not sure that it goes with my figure. Um, I don't know if I would go to space. Probably. But it's not high on my list. I, I'd like to explore more of the Earth. I mean, my the name of my brand is Alice's Adventures on Earth. If I went to space, I'd probably have to change it to Alice's Adventures on Earth and space, which is, I don't know, it's a bit long, don't you guys think? <laughs> so I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I'm open to go to space, I guess. Maybe when it's really safe, if, you know. I'd love to see the Earth, I guess, from outer space. But other than that, I don't know that there's really much to do out there unless we find some aliens. So, uh, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about that. Do you want to go to space? If you know, if all of a sudden it was, you know, the same price as a regular flight on Delta. <laughs> I don't know, but great question. I could join the space force. That's a good, that's a good question. A good suggestion, I should say. Space Force it is. <laughs> Thanks guys for all joining in the chat here. Appreciate it. Um, I also wanted to just talk to you guys about, you know, favorite fall destinations. Uh, visit Pakistan. Oh, here we go. Sorry, I'm just jumping all over the place, guys. Um, Pakistan, that's another country that I'd actually really like to go. I'd actually really like to explore more of the Middle East because I've only been to Dubai and Turkey, which I'm not really sure if that is even considered the Middle East, but um, I would like to explore more of that region because there are so many beautiful, like ancient things in these areas. Obviously, Pakistan has the highest mountain in the world, you know, one of the highest mountains in the world with K2. And there's so much beauty there that I think people don't know exists because of, you know, especially here in America, the news that we see about, you know, Pakistan and the Middle East, unfortunately, is just war and devastation. So definitely an area I'd love to go to. I was actually in talks last year with uh, the Pakistani tourism board about coming to Pakistan and doing a trip there. So I really hope that when tourism comes back I'm able to do that because I think it's an important place that we need to be thinking about more from a place of tourism and from a place of you know curiosity history and culture and not just you know talking about the negative things associated with it so yeah thanks for bringing that up Hassan I would love to come there and hi to Michael from Hudson New Hampshire so hey, <laughs> hey to New Hampshire, yeah, if you guys didn't know, I'm from New Hampshire, so always love seeing another New Hampshireite in the chat, and um, really glad to see you in there, so and thanks for joining in the Instagram chat, guys, too. Um, I also wanted to mention that Hawaii actually just reopened for um, travel to outsiders. They no longer have a quarantine period, so if you guys are looking for places to travel and are American, you can now go to Hawaii. Niels, it's so nice to see you. Um, guys, Niels just joined in the Instagram chat. He was my host actually in Norway. So if you guys saw my Norwegian uh, videos last year about herding reindeer, things like that, he was actually our host. He is a Sami um, member and the experience was amazing. If you guys haven't watched that video, check it out on my YouTube channel. And so nice to see you and I uh, hope everything is going well in Norway. I miss you guys. and. I hope that I can come back there really soon and see you guys. <laughs> Do I know the Itchy Boots channel? She rides the world on a motorbike and is in most of those countries, Turkey, Pakistan, etc. I don't know that one, but I'm gonna check it out now that you mentioned it after I um, stop talking to you guys here. <laughs> so I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, it's an interesting place that I'd love to see more of, so. Are there any national parks that you guys haven't visited or that you want to know more about? And funnily enough, Crafty 45, what are my two favorite national parks and why? I'm so glad you said that because I was just transitioning in to national parks. 
my two favorite national parks. I have to start, I guess, by saying I haven't been to every national park yet. But two of my favorites are Lawson Volcanic National Park, which is in Northern California. I love this park because it's a little bit less touristed. It's also just honestly really, really like crazy landscape. You have like kind of all this volcanic fallout as you travel into the park from all of the volcanoes that are in Lawson Volcanic. And you've got glacial lakes, there's actually fumaroles and boiling mud pots and all this stuff that you think only exists in Yellowstone National Park. So really love that. There's some great hiking there as well and just so many wildflowers. Um, just absolutely loved it. And I guess my second favorite national park. Oh, it's really hard to choose a second one. You know, I really love Yosemite. Uh, I also love Yellowstone, which I'm hoping to go back to this winter because uh, I've never been in the winter. And mm, it's a hard choice on a second national park. But I guess I'll have to go with Yellowstone. Just because it's so diverse, it's so different than every other national park, there is, there are so many animals. And I think, you know, I haven't visited Glacier National Park yet or Denali National Park. And I think once I do, those will probably be higher up on my list. Um, but right now, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Yellowstone and Lawson Volcanic. And <laughs> Old Man Hacker just said, shh, don't tell anyone <laughs> about Lawson. But I've actually got a video on Lawson. If you guys want to watch it, uh, check it out on, on the, this channel after, after this. Um, have you ever visited the Yukon in Canada? You know, I've been to quite a few places in Canada. I have not been to the Yukon, however. Um, one of my favorite shows, though, is actually Ice Road Truckers. Have you guys ever watched that? Um, Ice Road Truckers is like, they're in Alberta, but it's, you know, they go on these crazy, crazy ice roads. It's like, I love it so much. But yeah, going back to Canada, I have been to the Canadian Rockies through Banff and Jasper National Parks, which I absolutely loved. Um, spent some time in British Columbia and Vancouver and Whistler, which I also absolutely love. So Canada is just a treasure trove of beautiful places, beautiful hikes. And obviously as an American, I can't go to Canada right now, but hopefully next summer I can take another trip up there too and do some more exploring in some of the Canadian wilderness because there's just so many places to explore. And that's actually one of your guys' favorite videos of all time on my channel is my video on the Canadian Rockies. So um, I know that you guys want to see more of that country as well. Um, Solo Vagans. Yes, he just mentioned Australia. Well, you guys, actually, my first ever video on YouTube was on Australia, <laughs> World Heritage Adventures Australia. I will say it's not my best video because it's really old now, but I actually went, I did scuba dive in the Great Barrier Reef. Um, you can find it on YouTube if you, if you go back <laughs> a little ways. Um, you can actually find it on there. And... I, I did a lot of stuff in Australia, absolutely loved it, but yes, you're right. I do need to head back to Australia and do some more explorations there because there's a lot of stuff that I didn't get to see. Bob's Adventure, I, he would love to see me do Olympic National Park or Mount Rainier. You know what, I would love to do both of those. So I was talking to somebody, or maybe in last week's live chat about, you know, wanting to kind of climb every, the tallest mountain in every state, Mount Rainier, definitely on my list. If I had had more time this summer, which I spent most of my summer in Colorado, but if I had more time, I would have loved to go and climb Mount Rainier. Um, I'd love to do Mount Rainier. I'd love to do Denali in Alaska um, and all the other really tall mountains in the United States. So definitely on my list. Um, and if you guys haven't checked out some of those Colorado videos, if you want to see some of the like beauty of the Rockies, definitely check those out. I did a couple of them this summer, uh, a couple 12,000 footers, a couple 14,000 footers. So check those out if you get a chance. Um, but yeah, Olympic National Park, absolutely would love to go there. And I need to do all, you know, 62 national parks that we have now. So definitely on my list. Um, Hassan just has tips for hiking, which is great because that's actually on my list of stuff to talk to you guys about today. And tips for hiking. I think <clears throat> I should have brought a water over here, guys. Um, before we get to that, Tom, Tom Take Two just said he spent a whole day in Rainier without seeing the mountain. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard, you know, Rainier actually has, 
the most extreme, some of the most extreme weather in the United States. And so if you can prepare and be, you know, and get through hiking Mount Rainier, you're usually prepared to do kind of any mountain. But um, I do want to talk to you about tips for hiking, especially now that we're getting into the winter season where the weather is changing. You do need to be more prepared in this season than you do in the summertime. So it's really important that you guys always like pack everything that you need. Make sure you always bring enough water, even when it's cold outside. And in the winter time, you also need to pack, especially if you're gonna be hiking anywhere where there might be snow or ice, micro spikes, trekking poles, layers. Definitely bring like a pair of gloves, uh, a hat. Even if it's warm when you leave your car, you never know what the temperature is gonna be at, at the summit. So you always wanna pack layers. And <laughs> Tom Take Two just said he's seen Rainier from a plane and his favorite national parks are Glacier, Grand Canyon, Olympic, and Yosemite. So if you guys wanna put your favorite national parks in the chat, please do and I will share them as well. Um, but yeah, those are really my hiking tips is just always be overly prepared. I think, you know, my last video on hiking in Alabama, I got a couple of comments actually from some of you guys that asked about, you know, all the things in my backpack because I always have like a huge backpack, right? But I have a huge backpack because I'm always super prepared. I hike alone, as a lot of you may or may not know, which means, you know, if I get into trouble, I have to take care of myself. There's not going to be, sorry guys, why? <laughs> There's not going to be anyone coming to my rescue unless somebody else happens to come upon me on the trail. So, you know, if I'm cold, if I'm hungry, if I'm thirsty, if I, you know, get a blister or, you know, God forbid, like fall and hurt myself, like I need to have everything I need in my backpack. So I've always got more water than I need, like a liter more than I need in a camelback or a, a water bottle. Uh, I've always got extra layers, so if it's even if it's 80 degrees out, I've got a shirt that is going to cover me for sun protection. So I always have all this extra stuff. I've got you know an emergency kit, a first aid kit. I've got a fire starter. Um, <coughs> Niels from Norway just said, "Remember to bring grass for insulation in shoes in the winter time." Absolutely, and <laughs> that makes me laugh so much. If you guys haven't watched that video. So that you can share in our inside joke go check out winter in norway on my youtube channel you will see what niels is talking about with the grass in my shoes and uh it's very cold there in the arctic and that's kind of a little secret secret trick uh, <laughs> to keeping your feet warm but yeah also you know bring extra socks bring a hat as i said bring gloves if you are hiking in the winter and i will say like last year when i was hiking in the smoky mountains in winter or this earlier this year you know, there were so many people on this hike up Mount LeConte and it's covered in ice and then also snow at the top that didn't have micro spikes or any sort of, <clears throat> you know, slip resistant boot. They didn't have trekking poles or anything like that. Just totally unprepared and they're slipping and falling. And honestly, they could have all really gotten into dangerous situations because they didn't read the trail information. So one of my other big tips when going out hiking is to check all trails before you go on your hike. Make sure you know what the trail conditions are. Um, for those of you that aren't in the United States and maybe don't have access to all trails, there's probably some other hiking apps that you can check, but I always like search the internet before you hike to make sure that if there are closures, if there are weather conditions, or if you know, you're going to a national park, you can also check with the park service to check trail conditions because a lot of the times I will think, okay, I'm gonna go here. And then I'll read the trail information and someone maybe said the day before, oh my gosh, there were so many bugs or oh my gosh, there was so much overgrown stuff on the trail, make sure you wear pants because you're gonna get all cut up on the trail. So these things also help me be prepared because I've already talked to basically other hikers that are giving me information. Um, so always, always want to be prepared and oh yeah salvage so said don't forget to to carry a bag full of camera and its equipment <laughs> yeah so one of the things i also carry guys is like a lot of cameras so <laughs> my bag also has like a drone a gopro a big camera 
a couple of batteries, maybe a solar panel, <laughs> a couple other things that I bring, you know, just to add some weight in there and to kind of have a clown bag. Um, uh, Dorian, oh great, yes, thank you. Check out the Canadian video, really appreciate it. Um, Travel and Gilbert just said they'll be hiking in the Smokies next week. Well, oh my gosh, have an amazing time. Please let me know um, either on Instagram or in the YouTube chat after you get back where, you, where some of your favorite places were. And for those of you that are, you know, want to go hiking in the Smokies, I do have a video on that from earlier in the year. I'm going to be heading back to the Smokies, as I said, um, probably in a couple weeks and doing some more trails. Actually, when the road closes in probably about a month up to the highest point, I want to do that hike. So lots of, lots of stuff on the agenda here as well. So excited to share all that with you guys. And this has been a really fun chat. You guys have been super active and I've loved chatting with you guys on Instagram and here on YouTube. I always appreciate talking to you guys on Sundays. And you know, next week I'll be back with Nature News Live. So we'll be talking about obviously science and nature, the environment, wildlife. I've got a lot of updates for you guys on that. I just filmed this week's episode before I hopped on here. So got lots of stuff to share with you. Uh, crafty girl before we go just asked what do I carry for snacks on day hikes heading out on an eastern five park national park swing on Tuesday oh my gosh well first of all have an amazing time that sounds like such a fun trip and I'd love to know let me know right now in the chat which national parks you're hitting because that sounds awesome so I guess for snacks sometimes I bring pancakes <laughs> I guess it depends on I, I'm a little bit different on every trip so some of the snacks I typically bring hiking are things like uh, fruit. Uh-oh, guys, I might lose you on Instagram here because my phone's about to die. But I, I love to bring um, fruit like an apple or um, a peach or something like that. I, I bring bars every now and then, pretzels. I gotta have a bag of potato chips on every hike. It's like my, my hiking treat, I guess. Um, Yes, that is a bamboo plant behind me, guys. Bamboo plants are good luck, so it's like christening my new, my new place here. Um, other things I like to bring, I, I like to bring peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, just from being a kid. Um, if I do bring pancakes, I usually like make them the night before, and I make like these high protein pancakes that are actually like banana, almond, and um, regular flour, a little bit of vanilla and one egg, and, oat, and oats. And they're actually like really high in uh, protein, I usually just put them in a little to-go bag and take those with me. I also like to bring, um, I guess that's about it. I don't really know what else I bring on hikes. <laughs> I'm, a I'm doing a terrible job answering this for you. <laughs> you like the Quest cookies, not the bars, lots of protein, not much sugar. Yeah, those are good too. You know, I, I kind of try out different things all the time and I, I typically like to bring also trail mix. I'm a really big fan of trail mix. I love peanuts and anything with chocolate chips. So if it's a, if it's a cooler um, afternoon, oops, that bug landed on my nose, then uh, yeah, then I love to bring trail mix. And then also on Kilimanjaro, one of the things that I brought was dried fruit. Um, love the dried mandarin oranges, the dried kiwis and the dried mangoes. Those make for great hiking snacks because they're pretty high in sugar, but also so they give you a little bit of an energy boost as well. So those are kind of my recommendations for hiking snacks. Um, my best hiking places, um, ooh, Colorado, for sure. One of my favorite places to hike. Um, it's just so beautiful. There's so many hikes, so many high hikes, um, just a diversity of places that you can hike. It's, it's hard to ever kind of get bored. And there's so many 14ers, I think 58 14ers in Colorado. So love Colorado if you want to hike. And, and want to really get in like tip top shape because with the high elevation there is just so many options to be able to really challenge yourself um, with that and hike with Mike hey in the chat thanks for joining um, yeah so if you guys have other questions I am going to jump off here in a second we've been talking for almost an hour already and uh, this has been so fun um, so if you guys have other questions you know hurry up and, and put them in the chat right now so I can answer them for you. Um, and I also did want to share um, two things that I'm really excited about. Next year, this isn't official, but you guys are kind of hearing the sneak peek right now. I am going to be announcing 
before the end of the year. Two trips next year, one in Patagonia, one in Colorado. These are for you guys to come and join me on. So I'm really excited about those and look forward to announcing those and launching those. Um, so if you guys are excited about those, make sure that you subscribe, as I said, on YouTube. Make sure you turn on the notifications and make sure you're following on Instagram too. Um, and you know, if you have friends that love to hike and love to explore and maybe are gonna visit some of these national parks with you, you know, share my channel with them, get them to subscribe too. We've gotta get this channel to 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year and I need your guys' help to do that. So please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you're on Instagram, come on over and uh, do that there too. So guys, I'm gonna end the video, but I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for taking all this time out of your Sunday and joining me and chatting with me about travel and hiking and stunts too. So I will see you guys all next week here live on Sunday. And then I've got a brand new video actually coming out next weekend also, which is the best six fall destinations for, um, for traveling in fall. And also I'm gonna be pairing those with six wines that go with each destination. So it's like a little wine tasting and fall destination tour. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it. So stay tuned for that. That's coming out next Sunday. Also, Nature News is coming out next Friday. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that as well. And um, thanks again so much for chatting and joining in. And um, yeah, <laughs> you guys leave a comment after this video ends. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. And I am going to Say goodbye here on Instagram. It was lovely to chat with all of you guys that joined on Instagram. And it's so good to see you guys from Kilimanjaro and for joining uh, from all these trips that I miss you guys so much and Niels and, you know, so great to see you guys over there. So thank you. Bye on Instagram. <laughs> I don't even know how to get out of this. Okay guys, and thank you guys all to all of you guys in YouTube here as well. As I said, don't forget to hit subscribe. Because, oh, and one more thing before we go here, because guys, 96% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed, which is crazy. So hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys next week. Thanks again for joining.